Here are the first film pictures of a machine which is the original of a new type of medium bomber to be adopted by the Royal Air Force. It has twin engines of 645 horsepower each and a top speed of 260 miles per hour. This aeroplane has an unusual history. It was designed and built not for the Royal Air Force at all, but for the Daily Mail. Lord Rothermere, whose keen interest in national air defense is well known, desired to encourage British aircraft construction by ordering a machine which would surpass all foreign aeroplanes of similar type. The Bristol Aeroplane Company undertook to meet his requirements and succeeded so well that the Air Ministry be allowed to experiment with the aircraft as the prototype of a new class of medium bombers. The Daily Mail at once presented the machine to the nation, and it is here seen in flight from a Royal Air Force aerodrome. are sent to bombing planes, which are standing by 24 hours a day for such opportunities. <laughs> Off comes the sand cover from the carburetor air intake, and the camera at the far end of the drone gets the picture as three bombers roar over the sand. Fuzzies are getting used to airplanes. The hair fashions are developed for when they go courting. Goodness knows what they think about the war. Hey, poker face. A short flight brings the bombers over Massawa. This seaport was in Italian hands long before the conquest of neighboring Abyssinia. Hence, it's well equipped to harbor light warships and submarines. From their bomber station, Blenheims take off in formation for the rendezvous prior to a sweep over enemy-occupied territory. They've been briefed for a rendezvous over Canterbury, where they're to meet their escort of fighters. This operation has to be timed to a second. Therefore, the bombers are away and in the air first. Carrying more petrol, they can afford to loiter in the air while the fighters assemble. And here come the Spitfires, like a swarm of hornets. A picture reminiscent of a peacetime aerial pageant. The wing of fighters makes for the rendezvous 
where once arrived, they peel off and take position as escort. fly on with the Blenheims, you will seldom get even a glimpse of the Spitfires. For this show, they are spaced out in steps far above and to each side, watching for any Messerschmitts who might take it into their heads to challenge them. Presently, as we arrive over France, You'll see the camera swing from earth to sky, much as the eye of the pilot or navigator might turn. below in the trim pattern of the French countryside and above in the vault of heaven lurks danger. The flak is starting. German anti-aircraft guns stabbing the sky with their shell bursts. And yes, the Blenheims are over their objective. Watch carefully and you'll see a plane on the right of the picture drop its bomb. Homeward bound now, lighter by a thousand pounds, still searching the ground and the sky. If there was any interference from fighters, we in this plane didn't meet it. The Spitfires did their work too well. Over the channel again. And here some MEs did put in an appearance, not very successfully. At least one of them was driven down and crashed. So W for William comes in and makes another happy landing. By way of postscript, one reason why all our aircraft returned safely from this sweep was that our ground strafing fighters had been busy distracting the enemy's attention elsewhere. They attacked targets in enemy occupied territory and for good measure they attacked enemy seaplanes and flagships. From these operations, all our aircraft returned safe.